the heart of the Quran is the the power that flows through the book. It's it's a it's not a verbal thing. It's not a conceptual thing. It's something which is alive. And when you hear the Quran chanted in Arabic, you can feel that heart beating inside of your heart. As members of the Judeo-Christian world, most of us have sought refuge in the Holy Bible as our source for religious values. In the Islamic world, however, it is the Holy Quran which lies at the heart of religious belief and practice. Today the Islamic community consists of some 900 million persons and is rapidly growing. And yet most Westerners who are aware of Islam see the reverence for the Prophet Muhammad as the inexplicable survival of a violent and chaotic desert tribe. Within much of Islam, however, Muhammad's revelation is seen as a healing knowledge within the human heart and mind. It is for this reason that the Holy Quran is at the center of Muslim life, faith, and practice. The Quran is 6,666 verses. It was revealed during 23 years to the Prophet Muhammad in the deserts of Arabia in the seventh century of, the, of, of this era. The, the single message of Quran is always unity, unity, unity. But as we unfold it, it's kind of like a, a mathematical formula, that a mathematical formula has many, many applications. It unfolds in surprising ways. So la ilaha illallah is the essence of Quran. That, is, that means that Allah is one, Allah, that there's not, not, no reality apart from Allah. Now, out of that principle of unity, all of the rich implications which has produced 14 centuries of Islamic culture flow, and that they're continuing to flow. The two main sacraments of, or sacramental ceremonies of Islam are the prayers, which are made by men and women in straight lines facing the city of Mecca and, and Saudi Arabia. And the other ceremony is the zikr, which is a circular ceremony. When one is honored and blessed to observe an authentic ceremony of the zikr, which is often hidden in traditional Islamic societies among certain people, which are called dervishes or Sufis, one sees the dynamism of, of the zikr, which is like the waves of love in the ocean of love. The dervishes are repeating, Ya Hai, Ya Hai, which is the, uh, the Arabic word for Allah meaning the all-living one. And one hears the waves of hi, 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 uh, permeating the entire atmosphere. And the dervishes or the individuals participating feel like they've become waves in an ocean. They no longer feel like separate personalities. When the dervishes stand for the zikr, they are actually in paradise. They, are, they, they experience that they are in the bodies of the resurrection. So that they, in some sense, of course, are on this earth making the ceremony in New York City. But in another sense, they are truly in paradise in, in a very real mystical sense. The, the Quran is calling people home in that sense. The Quran is the home uh, of, of humanity. And, and by extension, all of the great scriptures, the Torah, the Gospels and others. So that the zikr, this circle of zikr is a is a environment where when you can where you can actually see the, the Quran, the sanctuary of Quran, uh, displayed before your before your eyes, your physical eyes and the eyes of your heart. So in that circle one feels at home. One feels uh, the most all of the joys of homecoming entering that circle. And that can't be experienced from looking from the outside. That can only ultimately be tasted from entering into that circle. My Sheikh told me that there were as many levels of meaning in the Quran as there were, were actually the words in Quran, or even as there were letters, Arabic letters in Quran. So it's an immensely complex hierarchy of meanings and realities and realms, so that there's something in Quran which is pure divine guidance for everyone, no matter what level of, of maturity they're, they've reached spiritually. The Quran is a book of peace. It, it counsels people to give 
give the greetings of peace to each other, salam alaikum. And even if, if one is, is wronged or attacked, the teaching of Quran is to res respond with the, the words of peace, salam alaikum. And that it's not, a, it's not a textbook of warfare, it's not a textbook of any sort of violence at all. In the introduction to Heart of the Quran, I asked the, the prospective readers to simply suspend their judgments about Islam, everything they may have heard, any kind of prejudicial experiences they may have had, and simply assume that Islam is one of the great wisdom traditions of humanity and, and as such do full respect. And then with that sense of openness, one can read these meditations on passages of Quran and begin to feel uh, their power and, and, their, and their coherence and cogency. The eternal source now reveals through you, my beloved Muhammad, this sublime book of truth, which confirms and safeguards the essential teaching of the Torah, the Gospel, and all the other authentic scriptures that existed before them. Thus Jewish and Christian tradition should be accepted reverently in the light of the glorious Quran that descends gracefully through you. Christianity and Islam are like the most intimate brother traditions. Uh, both the Prophet Muhammad and, and the Messiah Jesus are considered ultimate examples of love and mercy. So that the heart of, of Christianity is mercy, the heart of, of Islam is mercy. It's interesting that the two largest bodies of believers on the planet, Muslims and Christians, each having approximately one billion members in their mystic bodies, uh, are both traditions which acknowledge the Messiah Jesus. Both Islam and Christianity acknowledge the Messiah Jesus. Messiah is a word which is used in Quran for Jesus. Now there are some differences of opinion about the, uh, about the mysterious, spirit, the spiritual mystery which is expressed through Jesus and through, through Muhammad and all of these great divine manifestations. There are theological differences, but it is amazing to think that these two great, huge bodies of believers both acknowledge Jesus, so that this, is a, this would be a starting point for, for, for a sense of harmony. And the, the, the Muslim regards Jesus upon him be peace as the, as, as the uh, intimate spiritual companion of, of the Prophet Muhammad upon him be peace. They feel that, they, that these two great souls are together and are, are in harmony. The Quran doesn't contain any words of the Prophet Muhammad. So therefore the Quran is very oriented to Allah. It's, it's, it, these are the words of God. They came through the blessed instrument of the Prophet Muhammad. La ilaha the essence of Quran, which literally in Arabic means there is no God other than God, is really a statement that God is the only reality, that what we think of as creation or the world exists only in God. They, they have no separate reality. They're nothing apart from God. So the, God is the only reality, the only life. Our life and the life of all the creatures are, are expressions of that divine life. So that it, it's very, very important to know that, that Allah is not located in heaven or on earth or any place inside the creation, that the creation is located inside the heart of God. Mm -hmm.